I haven't necessarily done a video on this, uh, but I have been talking with the body about a certain kind of judgment that God has spoken with me about that he is going to be bringing. I'm not going to outline the judgment because anybody who wants to know should be returning to him. That's the bottom line. I don't want to present a stumbling block to people trying to prepare in a particular way to try to avoid what God is sending. So if you believe in God and this message concerns you at all, return to him and he will prepare you. That is the point. He is going to bring judgment. And I opened up the news today to see that the Statue of Liberty was struck by lightning yesterday. And I did not know this, though I really don't have occasion to think about it. Otherwise, I would realize, okay, this is a statue. <laughs> this is an idol of something. But the Statue of Liberty is the figure of Libertas, the Roman goddess of liberty. How sweet. What a sweet thing for us to put up in America. A statue, a, an image of a Roman goddess when, they, when the people who were fleeing to the Americas, particularly the, the United States, were fleeing religious persecution. What a moronic thing to do. She holds a torch above her head with her right hand and in her left hand carries a tabula and sata inscribed... July 4th, 1776 in Roman numerals and the date, which is the date of the U.S. Declaration of Independence. What a fantastic thing. So God sets apart a nation so that people can come to this nation and worship him freely. They're escaping religious persecution and they don't have the sense to understand that now they're setting up an idol that is supposed to represent their freedom from persecution, their independence, not giving credit to God, not even revering God and not setting up an idol, but then putting on their money in God we trust. What a confused so-called Christian nation escaping the persecution of Rome and the prostitute that bore out of her, the Church of England, but participating in her prostitutions, doing the same darn thing. The torch is a symbol of enlightenment. The Statue of Liberty's torch lights the way to freedom, showing us the path to liberty. That isn't the path to liberty. God is the path to liberty. Being enlightened, tasting of the heavenly gift that comes from the Holy Spirit. Not some goddess of liberty, goddess of enlightenment. How stupid. I mean, we read about this stuff in the Bible and we think like, I mean, I've always thought how dumb and we're supposed to think how dumb because God even mocks it. He's like, you set up these gods and they have no eyes, ears or mouth and you have to nail them in place or they topple over. Good grief. Even the statue's official name represents her most important symbol, liberty enlightening the world. I, how does that even make sense? Liberty enlightens the world? <laughs> this is so stupid. So what this it reminded me of was Psalm 29, verse 7. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. Okay, so the voice of the Lord is doing this. Uh, are we listening to what the voice of the Lord is saying, guys? That's what this country is all about, right? Enlightenment. We're so enlightened. We've thought ourselves into... Incredible ruts that third world countries look now look at us and are like, these people are nuts. They've thought themselves into a hole. This highly civilized, highly intellectual superpower can't even get it together. Like they don't even know the difference between a man and a woman. They're incredible idolaters traveling all across the world thinking that they're doing good by medicalizing people. Even though other nations who don't set up idols like that get to actually see and experience the miracles of God because they don't have anything standing between them and God. But we don't see it because we trust in our idols over him. Fabulous Christian nationalists go around telling everybody there's more of us than there are of you. We have Trump. We are a laughing stock to the people we think we can look down on. We're idiots over here.
incredible idolaters who call themselves Christian. Let's read Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of the glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry, glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. So if you're wondering what to do, you return to him. You don't prepare in any other way but returning to him. He says when he sends these things, if his people who are called by his name will return to him, he will return to them. He will pass over you. He will protect you. But you have to return to him. You can't go to your idols and stockpile and do all these things just in case God isn't who he says he is. You have to trust in him with no other idols. Give yourself over to him completely. And guess what? It turns out it's not that easy, guys. I'm in an incredibly dire position right now. I have removed all idols and I'm waiting on him. I have nothing that I could even trust in right now. And I'm waiting on his faithfulness and I'm continuing to believe in his faithfulness. But I'm going to tell you, I have moments where I'm like, have I lost my mind? Is he going to do this or not? But I have to give everything. And remember that the Israelites, you know, God didn't say like, oh, okay, you know, half a mile before you get to the sea, I'm going to have you, you know, raise your staff and part the sea. No, they were up at the sea with their enemies chasing behind them. Last minute. What are you doing? Raise your staff, part the sea. You know what I mean? Like he's not giving you the play by play ahead of time. He requires faith. You hear what I'm saying? He requires faith. It's not an option. It's not a suggestion. It is a literal command. It is a requirement. Remember that the Israelites were promised he was going to give them a land. He was going to bring them into that land. And when he brought them to Canaan and he said, go take the land, they were too afraid to take it. They didn't believe him. They didn't trust him. Even after all he did. And because they didn't believe him, because they didn't have faith, he made him wander another 40 years. Make sure you have faith. Make sure that's what you're leaning into. I understand Having these moments, I had a moment last night where I was just like, I am sick to death of this. I am so over it. I've had moments, you know, throughout the day. I'm at that place right now, but I just have to keep trusting. And I'm sharing this with you because it's an offering and an example to you so that you can do this too. I'm not sharing it with you for your entertainment. I'm sharing it with you for your strength, for your edification, so that you can also stand like this and know that there's at least one other person in this insane world who actually believes in God, who actually believes in his promises and lives it out. You can do this. Please return to him. That's what we need to be doing right now. He's sending a lot of things. He has sent fires and floods and earthquakes in various places. We need to remember what he said in Second Chronicles chapter 7. When I shut up the heavens so there's no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. My eyes will be open, my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. Then a little further down, he says, but if you turn away and forsake the decrees and commands I've given you and go off to serve other gods and worship them, then I will uproot Israel from my land. And he did. I will uproot Israel from my land, which I've given them and will reject this temple I've consecrated for my name. 
I will make it a byword and an object of ridicule among the peoples. Guess what? We're the temple. So that is our fate if we go off to serve other gods. Now, when he's sending this wrath, you remember the words of Isaiah in 2620? Go, my people, into your rooms and shut your the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until his wrath has passed by. See, the Lord is coming out of his dwelling to punish the people of the earth for their sins. The earth will disclose the blood shed on it. The earth will conceal its slain no longer. Now, when you enter your rooms, you shut your doors behind you. You remember Passover, that you go into your house, you rid your house of yeast, and you isolate yourselves in him. So get in, return to him, repent, examine yourself, make sure that you're in the right standing and separate yourselves from the rest of the world so that when the destroying angel comes, he knows that you are not part of them. Separate yourself, circumcise your heart from the world, from the sinful flesh, separate yourself. And remember that you are a nation. You are part of a nation that has been called to separate, to be separate from the rest of nations. Please discern this message with God.